the dummy thick. Lee Fryman. Here we go. I've got to move around a lot so the cameras can't see how bad I am. <laughs> you got any trans people in the audience? Could you all like walk for me? You got any gay people in the audience? Could you all walk for me? Got any cis people in the audience? Stay quiet! <laughs> so, um, first things first, I'm gonna address the first thing every white guy I've ever met has asked me about. I said white guy and then straight guy? <laughs> I wrote about five jokes and then promptly forgot them, so this is all just like fresh, leaf humor. I'm really sorry. Anyway, the first thing that every straight guy asks me, and it's always in this voice, is what's with the shaved head? It's such a good straight guy impression. I say so myself. Um, I always say, well, it turns out some tattooists are really uncomfortable writing, do not sexualize me on my forehead. <laughs> so I'm going with the egghead instead because it's pretty hard to objectify what seems to be a 12 year old Nazi. <laughs> There's, there goes a the guy with really low self-esteem. I, I actually have really high self-esteem. I don't know where people get it from. I think it's due to the way I look and act and stand and talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I actually love myself. I was born with two things. One, an innate ability to control a room and get people to love me. And two, I'm humble. <laughs> um, my personal style, let's address this. <laughs> I would describe my personal style as it's, it's kind of like urban health golf, but then <laughs> it's conceptualized through a non-capitalist lens, which I think is really important. <laughs> or, if you want it to fit on a post-it note, just pretentious cabbage special. <laughs> I would say thickums. <laughs> it's, um, it's actually kind of convenient because a lot of gay men in the scene right now, in the dating scene, they want to look a lot younger than they are. And I've cracked the code. I've got it. I've just gone for newborn baby. <laughs> it means I smell real good, but they don't like it when I call them daddy. <laughs> You are, doesn't matter how attractive you are, dating is hard because first you've got to go on a date. <laughs> I don't like that restaurant. <laughs> I don't like your shit. <laughs> I don't like anything about this, but you're paying, so I have to smile. <laughs> then you have to meet their terrible friends. They've always got a friend where they're like, oh, he's great when you get to know him. And I'm like, cool, I don't want to get past that barrier. Because <laughs> that requires spending any time with him. <laughs> And then, of course, you've got to introduce them to the puppets that you made of your friends <laughs> that you used to practice social interactions on. And then you have to chase them down the street. And don't get me started on the blood sacrifice. <laughs> Ludicrous. <laughs> kind of forgotten where my, uh, where my set goes at this point. So I'm just going to stand and stare into the distance for like five good seconds. <laughs> I remembered it. <laughs> that actually wasn't scripted. <laughs> um, I was gonna point out that uh, humiliating myself in front of people is actually like a side gig for me. Professionally, I'm a barber, but um, a lot of barbers in Cardiff have a real problem hiring me because of my vagina. <laughs> Maybe I should start using scissors. <laughs> And it's like, yes, we'll have you. <laughs> Sit on this man's head. <laughs> I hear a lot from uh, cis male barbers that were like, the thing is, Lee, if you're not built for barbering. I'm like, well, no, I'm not Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> but neither are you, Craig. <laughs> it's almost like if I see. 
see a touch of ear hair, maybe I'll have a fainting fit. <laughs> or if I see a razor blade, maybe I'll go into a fit of hysteria. I'm a transsexual. I'm not a 19th century made from a murder mystery novel. <laughs> and if I was a 19th century made from a mystery novel, I'd be the murderer. <laughs> Because I know how to use a blade. <laughs> and like everyone in the beauty industry, I have no regard for human life. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you want my LinkedIn profile, come and find me at the end. <laughs> this is kind of where my set ends, but that was because I was lazy. And I was like, I'll write five jokes, I can pull that out for long enough. No. So I'm just relying on like my charisma, my spirit, and my really bizarre looking dome to make you guys laugh a little bit longer. But I would like to say that I'm really, really glad I was invited here for that time. Because usually I get turned down for jobs being trans, but here it was the only requirement! <laughs> that it didn't matter if I wasn't funny. <laughs> he was like, your face will do it, it's fine. Because um, usually I always get told that I just won't fit with the synergy of the group. You know the group that just so happens to be a load of cis straight guys who all look like they host a real ale podcast after work? <laughs> You know the guys, and I don't want—I don't want to shit on hipsters because they're out there living. is bad because I'm literally wearing a child's top <laughs> and I had to cut the sleeves off because it wouldn't fit over my arms <laughs> and a turtleneck so I look like everybody's weird uncle. <laughs> I love turtlenecks man. Oh they're so warm and cozy and everyone's like sex pest. <laughs> You seem like a really interesting woman. Yeah, that's the point where I just like run. <laughs> Full speed away from them. Because there's always one guy who's like, do you want to be my alternative princess? And I'm like, I just pissed myself. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> uh, I have a dog. You can't see it, but it will bite you. <laughs> and some of these guys at festivals as well, they're like, oh, so why are you interested in music? And I'm like, I'm here for one reason alone, because I can smoke weed and the stewards don't care. <laughs> That's why I don't go to Glastonbury. <laughs> so, uh, again, I don't want to shit on, shit on hipsters because that doesn't seem very fair. But I have dated a fair few. <laughs> so, the guys who want to date me, they all fall into like three main categories. There's always like charming, but stunted man-child. <laughs> Big heart, questionable facial hair. <laughs> like, oh, how long have you been growing it? Four years. Holy shit! <laughs> and this is coming from a guy with so much estrogen in his body that I can't even grow leg hair. And I still find myself judging them. They're the same guys who come into the barbers and they're like, are you sure you know how to cut a beard? And I'm like, well, I did a whole course in it, and you look like you just got dragged through a hedge backwards. <laughs> the guys who want to me on barbering are always the same guys who look like shit. Like, I once had a guy say, instead of tipping you, I'm gonna give you a, a few pieces of advice. And I was just like, when you came in, I thought you were homeless. <laughs> from you. It, from the smell of you, it's just drink whiskey. <laughs> anyway, three guys who always want to date me. It's always charming but stunted man child, lovable but questionable facial hair, and calls out someone else's name during sex. Oh. It's so nice to see so many of my exes here tonight. <laughs> straight guys specifically who I date because I am a masochist. I'm like, oh yeah, I'll date the guy who's in no way attracted to my gender. 
that would be deep traumatizing. <laughs> Where they end up with like this model fit girl. Like she's beautiful, she's an artist, she's everything that I'll never be. And I'll always be like, thank you so much, Lee. I know we're not together anymore, but you taught me to be a better man. And I'm like, cool. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you broke up with me. Like, I'm supposed to be like, at least I could help him move on. No, your girlfriend is so hot now. It makes me look like a troll who lives under a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> left me alone in the pub and was supposed to meet up for that important chat you said we were gonna have. <laughs> oh no, 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 I made you a better man. So now you can go fuck somebody else. <laughs> I might sound really bitter, but it's just because I am. <laughs> it's not that I hate men. I am a man. I love men. We're great. We pal around together. I've got three brothers in the front row. Three brothers in the front row. They all look the same. <laughs> when they all come downstairs with their tussled hair without their glasses on, I'm like, one of you, hey! Merry Christmas! Does your name begin with a T? <laughs> but I love my family, I really do. They were very accepting of me being trans. In fact, after I came out, my mom was like, hey, you know how we always make fun of your brother Tom for being the shortest boy? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, no, we're gonna make fun of you! <laughs> all the pronouns of my friends before she comes and visits me, but she just happened not to ask about Trevor and Peyton, whatever. Turns out it's because she was imagining them as an elderly gay couple, and I was like, 100% correct. <laughs> <laughs> On Trevor's part, at least. <laughs> I always joke about how old Trevor is, but the point, you, we're all the same age after 25. Who's even asking? Who's even counting? You've had enough life experiences for me to have a conversation with you. I can talk about my Beanie Baby collection. <laughs> live a, a full and rich life. I can talk to you about pogs. I can talk to you about taxidermy. I can talk to you about tax without the dermy. I can talk to you about dermy. After 25, everybody is equal, everybody is the same. Apart from Trevor, who's really 